So yes, that is for real. You can take your Python code and wrap it up inside HTML tags and this Python code will execute on your web browser as expected. And this is really powerful especially if you don't feel enough comfortable with JavaScript because in some specific cases you could use it as a kind of a replacement for JavaScript but at all this has a lot of potential because it is just a game changer when it comes to developing websites. So in this video I will show you how we can use the PyScript tags and also by the end we will explore some more tags that are going to be available once you use this project like PyENV and PyREPL which are very cool as well and this project is developed by Anaconda so this really means that it has a lot of potential and a bright future and that's it let's get started but before that don't forget to hit the like button if you will enjoy here and also consider subscribing to my channel and Let's go! So that's the starter template that I showed in the beginning of this video. I added some styling by my own and you can see that those two lines that import some CSS and JavaScript files are responsible to the magic of PyScript. And then the Python code is just wrapped with the new PyScript HTML tags that are supported thanks to those two lines, right? So the biggest question that we ask ourselves in this stage is if we could, besides using pure Python files and import the files within the PyScript tags. Now doing this is going to be possible, but there is one piece of thing that we should understand before we do that. So if we go ahead and create a Python file, let's call this mylib. And I'm just going to move this Python code by Ctrl X from here and paste this in here. So this is a valid Python code, as you can see from the syntax. And now we are looking for a way to import this file, right? Because index and mylib are in the same file. And that's possible by seeing something like PyScript and then give the attribute of src mylib.py like that. Now, if we do something like this and bring on our website, then you can see that we have an error. Now, this basically happens because we try to execute an external code from an HTML file. And that might be something that is going to be blocked due to some policies that the Chrome has for security reasons. So if we press on F12 in the browser, then you can see that this is exactly the case. The execution of the Python file has been blocked by course policy. And that's just a policy that is turned on by default in your Chrome browsers or probably in any browser that you work with it right now. So in order to overcome this, we actually need to work with a web engine like Node.js or Flask if we use Python backend frameworks. So that's why we can quickly set up a Flask project in order to take benefit from all the features that PyScript brings with it. So let's bring in our terminal here and install Flask. So I'm going to go ahead and say pip install Flask here very quickly and now that we install this, then we can go ahead and set up a Flask project. Now bringing our PyCharm here, let's go ahead and create a Python file that we could name run. And let's go ahead and see how we can start a quick Flask project. Now if we bring in our browser again, then I'm just going to take a starter template code how to get started with Flask from this website. Now again, Flask is just a backend framework that allows you to create easily websites with Python, not executing Python with HTML, but really having a web engine running. So going to here, then let's go ahead and bring in this minimalistic application code. So if we go back to our PyCharm and paste this in here, then we have a very basic Flask project. Now we need our terminal to execute this Flask web application on our workstation. So we are going to set a couple of environment variables. I'm going to start by set flask underscore app and that's going to be equal to the flask file. And this will be export for Linux users besides set. And the other environment variable is going to be flask underscore env equals to development like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and say flask run. Okay, so now that we have this, then by accessing this URL from the browser, we should see our website. And if we really visit this URL here, then you can see that we see the expected result because we have a function here that returns in p tags hello world and accessing the first location in our website should return this HTML code. 
Okay, so now that we have done this, then we should understand that we want to redirect the first URL to some HTML file to test the Py script, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change this to render underscore template, and we are going to send our users to an HTML file that is called index.html, the name of the file that we started to work with. But in order the Flask to recognize this file, then we need to move it to a directory that is intentionally going to be named templates. So I'm going to create a new directory and I'm going to drag and drop my index.html inside this template directory. Now, once we have done this, then we can go ahead and test this out. So if we bring in our browser here, then we are going to see this exception that is just basically going to tell us that we have done something wrong here. Now, when we use a web server, basically it doesn't matter any web server it is. In order to serve files that are exceptional from HTML files, then we need to think about different methodology because when it comes to, for example, working with Flask, then serving files like script files will have to be delivered externally. So this means that if we relate to this index.html file like it is in the same directory with the mylib.py file, then we are going to have some problems. So that is why we are going to change our methodology a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to visit my code snippets repository here and I'm going to take a look here in the second file that has been published. So this is a file that is called pyscript-route. Now I'm going to copy and paste this in inside our project and we are going to explain what is going on here. Obviously this should be followed up with a library that we should import and that should be import OS. So the exceptions here will disappear. Okay, so in this route, we basically generate a URL for all the files that are served under the scripts directory. So this means that this is just a function that returns the content of a file that is existing in the current directory joined to the scripts directory joined to the file name. So this means that if I go ahead and create a directory here that is called scripts and I move my mylib.py file to the scripts directory with drag and drop like we did before and I'm going to confirm refactor then this means that now we have a URL for each of the files that we serve that are script files, like this Python file that we want to execute from the HTML itself. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to visit the URL of forward slash scripts and this one is going to be followed up with my file name. As you can see, we have a placeholder in line 6. So I'm going to go ahead and say mylib.py and once I press enter, then you can see that I really see the content of the file, right? So that is a good result for us. And now that we have this, then we can go ahead to our index.html and we can relate to this file by its URL and not by its file location. That is how web servers like to see script files that we should relate to them. So this means that we are going to write here something that will look like the following. So we are going to use a special syntax that is called Jinja and I'm going to open up and close the curly brackets twice here. And I'm going to call URL underscore four. This is a function. And I'm just going to pass in within single quotes scripts. Okay, and then I'm going to use a comma followed by a space and then I'm going to specify that my file name is equal to mylib.py and this should be enough to execute the mylib.py file that is inside the scripts directory. So I'm going to leave this URL and I'm going to go back to my root page, to my first page and you can see that we have this exception. And that's because this should be wrapped with single quotes as well. So excuse me about that one. I'm going to save that and refresh our page. Okay, so you can see that the same file executes now. And in order to prove you that, then I can take some changes in my mylib.py file. Let's make this a shorter loop. For example, let's loop over five integers from zero to four. 
refresh this out and you can see that it works. So now you can control your Python file from an external directory that is called scripts and create there as much as Python scripts that you like to and then basically execute them in a web browser in this way. Okay, so now that we understood this, let's see some more benefits of the PyScript new HTML tags. Now you can easily visualize your data with the matplotlib library using some special HTML syntax that will allow basically reading your data with the matplotlib library and then you can display it very very easily. Let's see how it's done. So going to our index.html file, the only thing that we need to do now is to basically have a plot.py file, for example, that will just be responsible to read this Python file and show its output in the browser. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show how it's going to work. So let's go ahead and change this to a new file that it will try to read a plot.py file. And obviously I need to create this one inside my scripts directory. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And in order to show you the example here, I'm going to bring in the original PyScript project. Now in this project, you can see that there is a file in the PyScript.js directory. And again, inside the examples directory. And right after that, there is a matplotlib.html file. And I'm only going to bring in the Python section of this file here. So this means that I'm going to start from here and I'm going to copy until here and I'm just going to control C, go here and control V everything and now we have the matplotlib code in here. Now don't worry about the matplotlib not being installed. We are going to see some good benefits of how we can still work around this in the HTML browser. Okay, so now that we have this, then I'm going to go ahead to my index.html and I'm going to take here some changes. Now the plot.py file returns a rendered data visualization kind of a, a graph related to a big picture that we want to display. So PyScript receives usually an argument that is called output. Now when you say here output, then you are allowed to display the output of this entire file to a specific HTML element. And this means that, for example, if I go ahead and say here something like MPL, just a random output that I came up with, and I go up here and I say that I want to have a new div tag that its ID is going to be as the same as my output string, then we will end up receiving the output of the Python file inside this HTML tag. And we need this because matplotlib renders a data visualization image that we want to display in our page. So right after we modified our index.html and we know that we have a plot.py file, let's go ahead and see what will be the results. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to close this and I'm going to refresh our page here and let's wait a second and see what will happen. Okay, so you can really see that we receive no module named matplotlib. Now, this doesn't 100% mean that you have to go ahead and install the matplotlib library locally on your workstation. You can tell to your browsers what are your dependencies in the Python files that you look to execute. And that is achievable by one more magic HTML tag that is called pyenv. pyenv allows you to specify your dependencies for the Python files that you execute on your browser. And after that, we have this. Then the only thing that we need to do now is to say here hyphen space and then specify our list of dependencies. We could have matplotlib, we could have more dependencies that this HTML file relies on that we could just specify in a listed way in this approach. Okay, so this will be our only dependency. And now that we have done this, then I'm going to go back here and refresh our page. And you can see how nice it looks, right? We were able to come up with a nice data visualization. And that is just an example of how you can display the matplotlib images that are rendered in a specific HTML element. This also gives you more benefits of creating more Python files and just decide the output of them 
by using the ID string and so it will give you more control where you want to locate different data in your pages. Okay, so now that we understood this, let's delete this dependency and also relate back to my mylib.py file. Now we can also delete this div tag. Now there is one more magic HTML tag that could be used that will allow you to just write pure Python code in your browser. And that is something that is very nice and it will be as easy as py-repl tags like that. Now, this wasn't a recognized HTML tag in my PyCharm yet. So if I left click here and say that add pyripl to my custom HTML tags, then it should be okay without highlighting any errors to you. And I forgot that I should also delete this output equals to MPL here because this was of the previous example. Now I'm actually going to leave it as it is and I'm going to bring in what it will be responsible to show in our page. Now we can see that we still have this script that is running and there is nothing wrong with that. But we also see this nice line here that will allow us to just write pure Python code and execute it along the way. And that is a very nice feature because it will allow you to debug quickly on your browser and also executing a Python code in your browser is al always something cool that you might want to do. Okay, so I can go ahead and say, for example, um, import mat, for example, and I can just try to print the mat.sqrt of 49 maybe. And obviously we should receive seven underneath. And I can import more libraries that I'd like to. I can import the OS library and I can just try to print os.getcwd and this is a method so I will open up and close parentheses and I will execute that and you can see that I received the directory back so that is nice. So that will be it about what PyScript could do for you. I think that this project has a lot of potential and it could grow into something very big in the future like many other frameworks that allows writing the front end side with Python which we will also discuss about them later in other videos. Okay, so if you enjoyed in here, please be sure to hit the like button in that video and consider subscribing to my channel so you will never miss an upload and I will see you very soon.